As I promised part of module one, I like to demonstrate the power of project.dat as well as uh, basically project.bib. In order to get a hold of project.dat or project.bib, uh, they are both available uh, on, under the parameters window. And of course, you could come in here and see I've already included a feature, user feature, apexdemo.platform uh, project file, as you see. And this is the Apex demo that is included already part of my project. If you recall, I have already created my project under basically G drive. And here, this is my project. And I've added this particular program, which is a regular Windows CE program. And that's the Hello World. So as you see, this is the Apex demo application. If I execute it, it's not going to be executed under Windows 32 desktop mode, but it will be executed under Windows CE. So what I like to do, I like to copy this part of my image. So in order to do that, I've already came in here and I've included that part of user feature. So I don't have to add any other entry in there. However, I like to create a link. I like to create a shortcut for this particular executable. And in order to do that, I have to actually create a text file. And this, this text file has already been uh, written. And if I go down in here under uh, WinCE 3.40 uh, under SysGen under basically Oaks and Files. Uh, you can actually see all these files available in here. Let me actually go in here under Files under Oaks. If I go and select all text files, there you go. This is the link file that I've opened it already. And as you see, all you need to have, according to the module one, in order to create a shortcut, you need to basically have uh, a specific command line as you see in here and that specifies the length of the strings that you would like to have you could actually change this string this is the length of the string basically 20 characters and then basically after that you put the pound sign and then you put the location of that particular executable so by doing that you're basically creating a shortcut the extension has to be lnk and you have to store that in the following directory you have to store it under wherever you have installed your project, under WinCE 400, under the platform CEPC Oak files. You have to place it over there under this specific extension. After you did that, you come down in here and you add that shortcut into your project.bib and you are specifying where it's located. So after you did that, you can come down in here and create the project.dat. On the project.dat, as you see, I specify the directory and I specify the file in that directory. So this specific shortcut will refer to that executable. It's like you're double clicking on the executable. At the same time, I'd like to demonstrate another information that you have, again, on page 31 on module 1, course 2540. I've created a root directory called program files and below that program files I also like to create another directory called Apex Infotech. I have already built this image. Now what I like to do, I like to download this image into my platform and then using the remote tools, remote file viewer, I like to show you that these files are available on my image. So please pay attention to this. In order to do that I've already configured my platform and as you see I'm using a specific CEPC, Kia 2400 model that we are using in this class and of course all I need to do download and initialize this target so it's waiting to receive a download request I'm booting my device and of course is downloading at the moment is downloading my image I have to wait for this download to be finished and then right after that you see I'm jumping to the debugger and as soon as the debugger it finishes the operating system will be booted on my device so my download is finished, and now as you see, uh, there are three, three I icons in here that indicating that the debugger is waiting because I'm not actually doing anything at the moment. Uh, debugger is not working, uh, is waiting for my command in order to break it or uh, basically stop debugging or get into the breakpoint. Uh, later on in module two, I I'll show you how to work with the debugger anyways. Target control is running, that's important, and that's the target control. Platform Builder 3.0 did not have this 
Platform Builder 2.0 had it. So in 4.0, they gave it us, uh, the target designer again. So this is a pretty cool uh, area that you can actually run your commands. Very, very uh, uh, basically handy for you. For example, you could type in uh, system, for example, uh, help. You could actually go with that, and automatically they give you some help. Uh, as you see, I'm running the system command. And if I wanted to get a list of all, all available commands that I can type, all I have to do, put the question mark, and that shows me all available command in here. Like S, that would be starting a new process, that you're passing the process name in there. You could actually go with uh, GI, which basically shows different things to you, like, for example, the process thread, the delta module. You could get a lot of information within this command. We did not have this a specific feature part of 3.0 but we had it part of 2.0 and now we have it again in 4.0 and then of course here no more download and this is the size of my image because it's a release now in order to see uh, what I have on my screen you can basically take a look at a variety of different remote tools that I like to talk about in chapter 2 but for now all I like to do is take a look at the file viewer so because I have already created a uh, link. I'd like to see what's going on in there on my image. Now, this is the C.NET default device. This is the C.NET default platform. Before I connect to it, I can actually go and configure it. And by configuration for it, you can actually go to the properties of it. I'm using the Kettle Transport for Windows C, which I have some talk in Module 2. I invite you to pay attention to that section. And using the Kettle service, it stands for Kernel Independent Transport Layer you can actually share the same network connection uh, and basically run your commands against it. In Platform Builder 3.0, unfortunately, when you downloaded your image, you couldn't use that network card ever again. But here in C.NET, you can actually not only download the image, but also send your debug information. So one network card will do. You don't have to have two, one for download, one for debug. So right now, if I go and test this, as you see, it's connecting to my device, the Kettle Transport for Windows CE establishes, and as you see, it says connection to device established. So as soon as I get the sound, as you heard it, basically I'm connected, I click OK and OK, and now all I need to do, add a connection to that default connection. So automatically connects to my uh, device, and basically get all the information. That's a file viewer client. That's the only way I can see what I have in there. As you see, there's a control panel that LNK. Uh, well, operating system has already created that. I, instead of putting it on Windows directory, I could have put it on the desktop location. It's totally up to you by the time you get into the platform builder, where do you want to place your shortcut? It's totally up to you where you like to place it. This is a directory location that you should place that. If I go on the Windows, as you see, I should have had the Apex Demo LNK as well as the Apex Demo Link uh, uh, or EXE. So basically, you can double click on this and execute the Apex Demo that way. There's also a target menu. Uh, you can actually run a, a specific command, Apex Demo. And as you see on my device, it actually executes that and it says, hello world. And of course, in order to see if that process is running, you can go to the CE processes and as you see, it shows that Apex Demo EXE is running at the moment. So by killing that process or terminating this particular application in here, you, know, you could see that the application is also getting out of my system uh, on the Windows CE device. If I close this process, basically you see that the process is getting out of it as well. The reason that the Apex Demo is launched already because I failed to rem remind you that I also added a new line into my registry under project.reg. On the project.reg, I also have gone in there and added a line in order to start Apex Demo automatically. So that's why you saw two different processes running as an Apex Demo. So Apex Demo got started automatically at the startup. And as you see, just because I've added the HK local machine in it and then passed the launch capability in order to launch that. So that's why you had like two instances of it. So in this demonstration, I've summarized module one. I've shown you how to launch a specific application at boot process. 
of course that doesn't make sense to have an executable to be launched I mean you should have like a device driver by the time you're creating it you place it in here and load that DLL at a startup and then of course I showed you how to deal with the file system and how to create a shortcut 